the glove, an archery glove. My grandpa taught my dad archery. And without my grandpa, shatterproof archery might not exist. I remember traveling out to Texas to visit my grandma and grandpa with my family. And my grandpa had built a, like a garden shed type thing, but it was a bow shed. He had a bow press in there. He had racks of bows. He had an entire setup to tune all of his bows. And he shot compound and traditional. And in their house, there was this loft that they had that was lined with first place trophies of him in all these archery tournaments he shot in. And I was able to watch my grandpa shoot as a little kid, and this was the coolest thing ever. Him shooting a traditional bow with a glove. Fast forward probably seven or eight years, I started building my own bows. Um, at the time, because I didn't uh, have the resources to buy a traditional bow, but I thought I could build my own. I must have voiced this idea to my parents or my family or somebody because that Christmas, my grandma bought me the traditional Bowyer's Bible. And I started reading that sucker. And uh, eventually I was able to come up with bows by sourcing some random wood and on and on and on. But once I had a bow built, coming back to the main point, my grandpa's like, hey, I don't use this archery glove anymore. If you'd like to use it, you can. And that was the coolest thing because I remembered as a kid, this archery glove that he used, so much history with it. Um, at least in my opinion, I was, I was pumped. And I used that archery glove of my grandpa's for a very, very long time. So let's fast forward a little bit up to today. This is the first bow that I made that was successful that I have. And this is a bow that I made this past week. As somebody who runs a business, a product-based business, the progression of the products is quite interesting. And two years ago, I started designing and building the first archery glove to sell for shatterproof archery. It started with testing leather after leather after leather after leather after leather after leather after leather. You get the point. We tested a lot of leather because the quality of archery products made with leather is only as good as the quality of the leather. And I ended up finding some super cool leather, but at that point I had to take a step away from designing the glove because I had overextended myself in the business and I needed to narrow back down so I wasn't too deluded. So I put it on the back burner, but six months ago, we picked it back up. I came to Jeremy with everything I had so far and said, here's the leather I think we want to use and let's design a glove. I want to give you creative freedom to see what you can come up with. So build the closest thing to a glove you can. Come to me, we'll look at it, say what we like, what we don't like, and we'll reiterate it over and over again until we come up with something we love. And a couple interesting things we decided on was on the front of this glove, we did not want any leather coming over the front. We had tested a few things and realized once your fingers are formed to the leather, it slides on just fine and you don't actually need leather in the palm to come to a strap. And so that was one of the big things we wanted. And then Jeremy came up with this really interesting idea to have this strap come straight off. You know, a lot of gloves, almost all I've seen, I haven't seen one designed like this, but they come down and then the strap just wraps directly around. Whereas this one, we have it angled so you can wrap it around and uh, buckle it. And it's this really unique design, uh, but it's super functional. There's two thought processes on this fastening method. So you use this little hole punch that has a slit in it to stamp into the strap or whatever you're fastening to whatever. In this case, we've got a strap 
We've got the button here. It goes around your wrist and slides on. The question is, do you have the slit slide into the button or do you have, or do you have the round side slide into the button? The thought process is that you would slide it over the hole and then it would slide right into the slit allowing for flexibility rather than using the slit to slide it in and then pulling into the round part. And this is the mistake we made is we had this oriented the wrong way because what we didn't account for is that the leather is flexible within itself. Leather has some give, it has a little bit of stretch, so you don't need it to slide into that slit. You want it to slide into the hardest stop as possible for the best fastening capabilities. So in this case, with the slit, it could, in a sense, slide out of that slit or maybe separate that slit over time. And we've sold a lot of gloves with the slit going the wrong direction. And the glove I use still today, one of the first ones we made, the slit is in the wrong direction. So it does work good, but it doesn't work as good as the other way. Depending on how it fits your hand, I've talked to a few customers who it would pop out occasionally and it is annoying, right? So I made a mistake, we made a mistake on this design and actually if you're somebody who has one of these gloves um, and you want it changed around if you're not satisfied with it, We'll fix it for you. Just let us know. But more importantly than just a mistake on this glove, I see it as an issue of values. If your values are super, super clear, your decisions become super, super easy. Our mission is to help people enjoy more archery. So if we're making a decision, we say, does this help more people enjoy more archery? If it does not help more people enjoy more archery, we're not going to commit to doing that. And not only in the short term, but for the long term. We're in this for the long term. One of our values is that we have unwavering character and that we relentlessly tell the truth because you're only as strong as you are honest. And so when it comes to things like this, it's really, really easy to um, not want to be honest, not want to admit you're wrong. and. This is, not, this is not a big deal. This is, if 50 customers want a new glove or whatever it is, we can take care of that. But if you do the small things right, you've created the habit, so when the big things, the really big things that actually matter, you do those right too. Another thing we live by, another value, is that we kill all ego. We leave our pride in the trash so that we can accomplish the mission as a team, and that is another thing that we live by. And so when we look at that as our standard, because we have decided this is who we are inside, we have that as our standard. Now our decisions are easy to do what we need to do in the business. So it's like, oh, let's just discount our ego. What's right by the customer? What's right by the team member? What's right to help people enjoy more archery? And we can just do that. We've been blessed and been able to sell bows, to sell archery accessories, to sell tens of thousands of custom bow strings and help thousands and thousands of people. And I'm grateful for that. And what I really want to say about that is thank you to my grandpa, because without him, I don't know if any of this would have happened.